You know Dr. Elsie Hart as a respected ear, nose, and throat and allergy specialist in Morganton. But what you might not know is that for one year, 365 days exactly, in 1968 and 1969, Air Force Captain L.Z. Hart served as a battalion surgeon attached to an Army infantry unit in Vietnam. His first mission, near the Cambodian border, was in what was called a fire support base. These are units about, uh, or places that you build about probably 300 yards diameter, surrounded by what they call concertina wire, which is uh, the razor barbed wire. Then various mines and, and some what we call food gas, which is actually napalm and a 55-gallon drum. And that was our perimeter, the three layers of that barbed wire, as well as various things, because at night you're basically in the middle of nowhere. And what they, the North Vietnamese, NVA and the VC, the Viet Cong, enjoy doing is try to overrun these places at night. The mission of these bases was known as Search and Destroy. I had like 30 medics under me, and one of them each was assigned to various platoons. And so they'd go out and platoon, platoon is 13 to 15 guys, go out and go into it. We were not really in the jungle area, we were south of the jungle. There were some areas of woods and this, that, and the other, and it was really looked for areas where the NVA or Viet Cong were uh, trying to infiltrate. Dr. Hart supervised a frontline triage unit and performed general surgery. If somebody got hurt, then the function was the medics to get them back to me in our fire support base. We'd stabilize them, and then we'd be calling in the helicopters, medevacs. And then the medevacs would get them to the hospital. Additionally, Dr. Hart and his medics would hold medical clinics for civilians in the immediate area when it was safe. First thing you do is you ride through the village. If there are kids out playing, mama's out hanging up laundry, it's okay. Nobody's out of their little hutch or whatever. You just keep on going, go right back. Because you know there's VC around or somebody. But we'd have these little clinics where we could see for whatever reason they came in and we had some penicillin shots we could give them and various medications and then bandages if they needed something and then We'd hold that for a few hours and then go back to our, to our base. The Viet Cong would periodically attack the base at night, but they were never successful. What they would do is uh, try to break through our perimeter. Uh, but fortunately, we had enough firepower. Being not only infantry, just with the M16s, they had uh, machine guns, uh, grenade launchers, uh, mortars, you name it. So we had enough firepower to beat back most anybody trying to... Uh, breach our perimeter. The fire support base was mobile and Dr. Hart moved several times. We'd usually build these fire support bases, stay in them uh, two or three months, something like that, and then there'd be a decision from above somewhere we need to move to another area and so we'd tear the whole thing down, load up our uh, vehicles and move to wherever and, and reset up. Dr. Hart got an occasional break, including two seven-day furloughs. The base also received some special visitors, including Billy Graham. After about two-thirds of his tour was done, Dr. Hart was moved away from the front lines. After you know, a certain period of time, you're considered a short-timer. They move you back to the rear, where it's a little bit less likely you're going to get hurt. For his last Vietnam assignment, Dr. Hart served as an anesthesiologist at a hospital that treated injured North Vietnamese POWs. On my particular ward, I had an NVA doctor that had been captured. And he helped me quite a bit because he could speak a little English in terms of helping me communicate with these guys. And Because one of the things is after we quote got somebody well or healed up, then we had to release them to go to the POW camps, the, the South Vietnamese had uh, prison camps. Well, whatever they did, each doc as they came through says, remember we're gonna make sure this guy never gets well because you want to keep him here to help you. <laughs> To this day, Dr. Hart keeps in touch with some of his medics, but he says he became cautious about relationships in the midst of battle. One thing I tend to do after a period of time is try not to be real close friends because the, especially one situation where I had where there was a guy who was a captain of a company. And usually it's rare that those guys get hurt. And 
One day they brought him in with a bullet right here. Boom. And this guy had been, you know, just before uh, drinking coffee with and this kind of stuff and talking about where we live and where we go and family and this kind of stuff. And so you kind of got away from making real close relationships, but you got to know people well. Despite the ever-present danger and the hardships of his Vietnam tour, Dr. Hart came away from it all with valuable new skills. The experience I had was stuff you'd never have here in terms of types of injuries and what to do with them and this type of thing. Uh, and so I think it, it really broadened your medical degree of expertise in dealing with a lot of things you might not routinely come across just in average daily being in uh, Morganton, North Carolina as an ENT doctor or even as a general surgeon for that matter. As Dr. Hart put it, his service in Vietnam was an extraordinary experience and focused him as a physician and as a man. As he put it, just don't sweat the small stuff.